Rajni is a school teacher. She is working in the school since past five years. She has been performing all her responsibilities in the school and uh, she is happy about it. But gradually what happens is she finds that there are certain skills that she needs to uh, get upgraded for and that's why she feels that she should go for program like B.Ed. Now since she is already working in the school and she cannot leave the job she has to think of an option which will give her the flexibility of working and as well as studying at the same time. She thinks of an option of an open university in that case. She enrolls for her BA program through open university and thus continues to work as a teacher and also uh, be a student when it comes to BA program. There are thousands and lakhs of such uh, persons like Rajini who have opted an option of open university or open and distance learning. In this session, we shall be discussing the concept of open and distance education and how the system exactly works from the point of view of a learner. Some other terms that are used for open distance learning are correspondence education, distance education, open education. Uh, this uh, the system of distance education has uh, come a long way. Initially, there was use of only print media and whereas now it is make, uh, making use of many media at the same time. So the term uh, correspondence education is no more in use but open and distance learning is the latest terminology that is in use. The concept of openness has been added to a great extent when it comes to distance education and hence these two terms are used in, uh, they are used together. The concept of open and distance learning has come into existence due to many needs, some of which are on the part of the society and some of the needs are on the part of the learners. Let us understand these needs uh, in detail. The first one is the need of the society, one of which is the population explosion. Now uh, as we see especially in the country like India where there is a lot of population is still there which needs to be educated whereas if there are institutions to be established for educating this large population, it will be a elaborate process, it will be time consuming process and at the same time it will not be possible still to reach the such a large population. So distance education provides a very efficient way of educating a large number of population using the minimal of resources. Thus, it handles a very large uh, number of students at a time. If one wants to uh, see it in terms of numbers, one can take an example. Say a conventional university, if it is handling say about 50,000 students at a time, then a parallel distance uh, education or a parallel open university handles the students to the tune of say 6 or 7 lakhs at a time. So one can see from this that about 10 to 12 times learners get educated within the same duration of time. Thus, this education is a right answer for handling the large number of population as far as their education is concerned. Another advantage is the cost economic option. Now for the uh, distance education, while educating uh, such a large number of student population, there needs to be some central uh, system uh, for educating such a large population of students, there needs to be some central facilities, there needs to be some central system uh, in place. 
now the university or the government or in general we can say the society has to spend some amount of money for establishing this central system of uh, logistics. While establishing this central system it is done once and for all. So once the system comes into existence it takes care of many decades of the open distance learning. There is definitely some recurring cost also involved in the open and distance learning but comparatively this cost is much lesser. For example, suppose a lecture or a study material is developed on a particular content then that uh, particular uh, lecture may be say audio or video lecture or study material in the form of print can be used for many students so just the cost of printing is increased if there are more number of students enrolled. If we take the similar situation from a uh, conventional university for uh, a teacher can take care of say 50 students or 100 students at a time. So in order to have the same teacher available for a vast number of learners the teacher will have to deliver the same lecture those many number of times and eventually the uh, cost involved in arranging those lectures may be in the form of honorarium to the teacher, may be in the form of organization of the lecture into the classes. So the cost is much more in case of conventional university. And that is why the distance education or open and distance learning forms a very cost effective uh, mode of learning uh, for the population. If we look at this uh, exercise from the learner's point of view, the learner in order to attend the classes has to daily travel to a, a fixed institution and uh, has to spend time, energy and even money for traveling. If the same learner is enrolled for the program through distance mode, the learner will be able to study without leaving one's place. So one can study at home or maybe uh, during traveling and so on. So one doesn't have to travel specially for uh, learning. So it saves a lot of uh, time, energy as well as money on the part of the learner. As the society progresses, there are very many different types of uh, professions that come into picture. The people need to get ready for that kind of work skills. If we take an example, earlier when women were not working, there was no need to have a daycare center. But gradually when the women have started working, there needs to be a system which takes care of the younger ones. So maybe uh, a few decades ago, the system of daycare center was not into existence but today one cannot think of uh, working women without having this support system for that working women of the daycare center. Now it is societal need uh, gradually that the person uh, who is handling this daycare center should have the skills uh, necessary to handle those younger ones. So earlier it was not the need of the society but gradually that is definitely a need of the society. And then maybe the system of education needs to uh, train those kind of uh, human resources which are able to handle these kind of support services. And this creates the need to educate such people and have the programs which are focused to uh, developing the skills of handling the younger ones through daycare centers. Similarly, uh, the service sector was not so much uh, in action earlier. Uh, may it be uh, providing the clean uh, vegetables and so on. So uh, gradually when the persons are uh, getting more busier in the world of work, this kind of again uh, support service is needed for the 
people who are working then the kind of manpower which is able to handle this kind of support services is required so the programs which are needed which are more say can, we can say a tailor made or which are addressing to the societal needs they can be better offered through open and distance learning because the manpower who is handling all these kind of services or uh, all these kind of uh, uh, skills uh, they are already into the world of work and the open and distance learning provides the opportunity for them to get their skills on open and distance learning as we have seen gives an opportunity for the learners to work as well as to study at the same time that's why the learners enrolled in this system need more freedom in terms of the time availability and the time uh, to be spent for the coursework that is expected in a program distance learning provides this kind of a freedom to the learners regarding where one wants to study and how much time one wants to devote for studying so uh, for example suppose a program is of duration of 2 years the conventional uh, system of education expects that the person should complete the program within 2 years but the open and distance learning gives the flexibility of time to the learners maybe till the 5 years so the program which can be completed uh, within 2 years the distance learning uh, gives the period of 3 more years to the learners for studying so this kind of uh, freedom and flexibility is given to the learners and distance education is the system which gives this kind of freedom so uh, from all these points you can see that the distance learning system is very much needed for the society and it is important in uh, whichever society uh, one uh, looks into there is uh, hardly any country which does not have the distance education option in the country distance education has provided the second option for those people who have lost the first opportunity to get oneself educated it has uh, worked wonders for especially those people who cannot devote complete time for studying and uh, it is offering the programs right from the small duration or a short duration certificate program to the highest level programs like phd if we take an example of country like india where most of the population is spread in small villages and at times even at remote places howsoever the government tries to provide the educational facilities at all these remote places it is not possible and not feasible to provide such kind of opportunities because it involves lot of uh, infrastructural investment and it is not possible to spend that kind of money for the country like india but then how does one provide education for all that population which is located at these remote places so distance education provides the option of having such kind of education for these uh, people at the remote places generally what happens is person gets uh, oneself qualified for the world of work till certain age beyond that age one needs to start earning with the pressure of supporting oneself so suppose uh, uh, there is a lady uh, who is studying till the age of say 20 22 years but after that then she has to support her family maybe look after the children and then it is not possible for her to be in only a student all throughout her life but as the one is working and as one is maybe even self employed the gradually one needs to brush up one skills or update one skills and even knowledge base and then one has an option of the open and distance learning in that case in such a case where one needs to upgrade the knowledge where age is not a limit even a person of uh, age say 70 or 75 80 can enroll for the programs in open and distance learning 
there have been cases where the person has completed doctoral level studies even at the age of say 77 or even 85 years. So, uh, the conventional university or the conventional education does not provide such kind of an option where one can go to the say college at the age of 40, 50. But distance learning provides that kind of an option and opportunity for the learners to learn at any age. The person feels comfortable in this mode as there may be many other learners of the same age or even sometimes uh, elder than the learner. So one feels confident that if they can learn even I can learn and thus age uh, provides no bar or age provides no limit for the learners to learn through open and distance learning.